One of the most important things you can do for your wheat crop is making sure you control diseases. I mean, let's face it, you compared wheat to corn and soybeans, wheat's planted earlier, it's got a lot thicker stand, it traps more moisture, it's raised early in the spring where, you know, conditions are just wetter and cooler and it's just ripe for disease, plus the fact that there's so much more money being thrown into corn and soybean disease protection as opposed to wheat. I mean, how many new breeding. great wheat varieties have we come up with in the last few years that are completely resistant to tan spot? I haven't seen that yet. Well, okay, you're right about that. We do have more disease problems early in the season, especially with wheat. And when we're talking about winter wheat and spring wheat, I mean, there's lots of different kinds of wheat out there. And whether it was planted in the fall or it was planted early this spring, I mean, yes, there's going to be a difference in terms of what growth stage you're at. So we're going to talk about the different families of fungicides that you can use, give you some strategies as far as picking products out, and then just talk specifically about what you're going to be doing this spring, what your timing is. Okay, the three main timings for spraying fungicide in wheat are at herbicide application, at flag leaf, and at heading. So when we look at the earlier timings, the herbicide timing and the flag leaf timing, pretty much all options are on the table. You can use any family of fungicide out there for disease control. Now, when I say control, I probably should say disease prevention because for any of these products to work, they have to be sprayed before you have disease show up all over your plants. Now you're gonna hear people talk about preventative fungicides and curative fungicides. Really frankly, I think it's a lot of garbage. For all those products to work, they have to be out there before there's a problem because they give a good layer of protection but once you've got a leaf tissue that has a whole bunch of spots on it that are covered with disease, you're really never going to clean that up completely. Yes, you can stop the disease from spreading, but you can't turn those brown spots on the leaves back to green. You've lost that spot on your leaf forever in terms of it gathering photosynthesis. Okay, talking specifically about the products you could use, like Darren said, the early timings, either at herbicide application or at flag leaf, you can use anything you want. You can use a strobal urine, something like Headline or Quadris or Aveto. You can use a Triazol or any of the products that contain a Triazol. There are lots of different ones out there. There are also some new fungicides that are coming on the market. One that gets talked about quite a bit is Zemium. That's in Preact. So you've got some choices there. It just depends on what you want to do and what maybe makes the most sense for your operation, what you've liked, what you haven't liked. I don't really care on our farm whether which one I'm using exactly. I just know this. I want to rotate things as I go on or I want to use combination products. And what we found is a lot of these big companies are trying to encourage you as well to use the combination products because over in Europe, for example, Darren and I were over there a few years ago and the strobe urines just don't work anymore. They're not controlling disease. People overuse them. We encourage you, use combination products. Use things that have a strobal urine and a triazole or a strobal urine and zemium. The other thing that gets a little bit tricky is the whole rate discussion. When we're talking about wheat that's just a few inches tall, there's not a whole lot of crop out there, not a whole lot of leaf area that we need to cover. And it certainly makes sense that we can use a lower rate than we would say at flag leaf where we have all kinds of plant tissue out there that we're trying to protect. I mean, it just makes so much sense. We should use a higher rate later on in the season. And we'll talk to people in different parts of the country. If you've got heavy disease pressure, by all means, use a little stronger rate. If you've got light disease pressure, if any, like we see in a lot of the arid climates where wheat is grown, guys say, man, I, I don't have much moisture. I'm just not anticipating a whole lot of disease issues out there. I'm going to use a half rate, especially early in the season at herbicide timing. In many cases, I think that's a very good recommendation and that's plenty of rate to give you the kind of prevention that you need. And then at that point, a lot of those people are picking the older, cheaper options as opposed to the newer, more expensive options that seem to be just a little bit better. Well, when you talk about things like tilt or bumper, for example, they're so cheap. Yes, it doesn't cost much money. And for guys who don't think they're going to have a big issue and don't need a lot of prevention out there, that can work fine for you. But again, like you were saying, brand, those combination products give you so much more flexibility and resistance management that in most cases guys are switching over to some of those products like a Stratego or a Quilt. Okay, one other big question a lot of people will say, well, how much residual do I get out of these products? I'd figure one to two weeks. Some companies will talk to you about a month's worth of residual. No, a week or two, that's probably all you're going to end up getting. Now, we also said 
hey, later in the season, you might have to switch products. What it comes down to is don't use a strobel urine after flag leaf. So flag leaf is the very end gate window. The problem is if you use a strobel urine later, test results have shown that you might have a higher incidence of Don in your crop. We just don't want any more toxin in your crop. That's obviously a bad thing. So then you have to switch to a straight triazole late in the season, something like Prosaro, Caramba, or even the old Folicure or Aureus, which is really inexpensive now. The other thing I don't think we mentioned is you're only going to protect the plant tissue that you cover. So we have to get yep. great coverage on these products. And you know, here's one myth that I hear a lot. Well, I'm going to spray it flag leaf and that will give me some help against head scab later on. No, no it's going to give you zero help against head scab later on. It will help you with the rusts on the flag leaf, but it won't help you with anything above that, like up on the head. So you have to have emergence of that head before you can protect it. And a lot of times when we're talking about head scab prevention, we're talking about at least 10 to 15% of that head is gonna be opened up and flowering. At that point, you can get good prevention of head scab with some of the key triazoles like a Prosaro or a Caramba. One last comment I'd make real quick. We farm in a pretty dry area of the country too, and we spray all our wheat every time, three times. Herbicide timing, flag leaf, heading, at least try some on your farm and see if it pays. If it doesn't pay, fine. I, I mean, don't continue to do it. But all I can tell you is a lot of these fungicides now are pretty good. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money to run out there. We have tram lines in our weeds so we can go out anytime we want and go spray ourselves. Inexpensive to do it, just something for you to consider. Well, preventing disease is very important, but so is weed control. Can you identify this week's weed?